The first key lesson that Lacoste teaches us about brand management is the extreme importance of partnerships. Now, specifically when we look at how Lacoste was able to grow so quickly, so successfully in the United States, a lot of it had to do with partnerships. But there are different types of partnerships. So the first that I want to talk about is key influencers. Key influencers are arguably the single cheapest way that you can acquire new customers because what you're doing is you're leveraging the credibility of people that already have trust with the target customers. You're also leveraging people that already have, in some cases, email lists, subscribers, fan bases, whatever media they're, they're in, they're going to have access to a lot of customers that you're going to want. So Lacoste does an excellent job of tapping into that as a, a more efficient way of driving influence with the people that they want to buy their product. So let's walk through some specific examples here of how they did that. Now, as Lacoste is expanding into the US, which is a much bigger market than France is, the focus is on influencers that are in the United States. And if we think about what the Lacoste brand stands for, it stands for two critical things. One is status, so kind of that luxury high-end feel, and the other is sport. So how do you achieve status in your brand? How, how do you make your brand represent status? Well, you give away your product to people that have status. And then what by association, <clears throat> you uh, are perceived as something that's reflecting status. So if we think of the Lacoste brand, the crocodile. There's nothing inherently luxurious about a crocodile. A crocodile could stand for cheap, it could stand for expensive, it could stand for whatever you want it to stand for. But by associating it with people like President Eisenhower or John F. Kennedy, suddenly it starts to take on a different meaning. And the meaning is high status. So what they did is they, they gave away the Lacoste products to these two highly influential people. They also gave it away to people like Bing Crosby. So Bing Crosby, a famous musician and artist. So there's this aura of status that's around it. Now, what, what you may think is missing here is where, where is the sport element? Because a lot of the cost brand is also uh, embedded in the sports realm. And well, one of those, for example, is reflected in John F. Kennedy, who goes around playing tennis with a Lacoste polo. And then when the paparazzi or whoever takes a photo, oh, there's a little at, uh, crocodile on his shirt. So uh, Lacoste starts to build this, this brand position in people's minds of status and sports simultaneously. Now, the question for you when you're in brand management is, uh, well, that's great if you're, you can get access to the president of the United States, the most high status position arguably in the country. But more realistically, what are you supposed to do? Well, one thing that you can do is you can use this free tool called SparkToro. And what SparkToro will do is it will allow you to categorize who your customer is so by who they talk about or what's in their profile whatever so maybe maybe your target customers product managers well you could change this drop down to um, has this word in their profile and then you put in product managers hit discover now and what you're going to see is a list of people brands websites etc that have influence already with your target customers so then what you could do is you could do exactly what Lacoste did give away your product for free, give away things that have your brand on them for free to those target influencers. And if they use it, if they're seen using it, you're gonna have that aura effect of association and credibility that comes with influencer marketing. Now, we see a little bit of a different approach today with Lacoste. The type of influencers are changing to reflect uh, modern times and what Lacoste wants to be associated with. So a good example of this uh, would be with Bruno Mars. So we see a little more of kind of a hit vibe, a little more diversity, a little more on the f kind of the fashion artistic space, a little less in kind of the preppy, old school, um, outdated feel. So that's how 
Lacoste is able to keep itself modern is by aligning itself with influencers that have some of that hip vibe. And you see this all the time in entertainment where uh, if you think about personal brands and entertainment, so musicians, you'll have somebody that perhaps is young, like a, a Justin Bieber, who, who kind of has this clean, fun feel initially when he was younger, but he needed some hip credibility uh, to kind of expand the user base or the, the, cusp, the fan base. Uh, so they, they would align Justin Bieber with rappers. So this is a, an excellent, easy way to gain access to new audiences by, by doing that kind of exposure. Now, we also see this with the cool co-branding with Ricky Regal. Um, it's not just Lacoste itself, but it's a whole sub-brand built around Bruno Mars. Now, the, the other key element here is the, the sports the legacy that Lacoste has, and it is maintaining that. So whereas before we're looking at kind of John F. Kennedy playing tennis, uh, we're also seeing today with uh, Novak, one of the most successful tennis players in the world. This guy is a winner and Lacoste wants to be associated with winners. So here he is holding up a trophy and what do you know? He's got a little crocodile on a shirt. Uh, so th this Novak influencer is incredibly important. And when he, when he wins a, a tennis tournament, he gets a lot of publicity. And in turn, there's kind of this reverberation effect that happens with Lacoste, where the brand is getting essentially free exposure, free recognition through the success by leveraging the success of uh, this famous tennis player. And if we look historically, the original influencer himself was actually the founder of Lacoste, Rene Lacoste, international tennis champion. So this whole brand was kind of built around him putting a crocodile on his shirt. And this is one of the things that you, you need to think about in terms of brand management is that there's nothing your brand, your brand name, your logo can stand for anything, but it's what you associate it with that gives it life, that gives it vitality. Associating it with this successful person, with that successful person, with this cool artist, with uh, this president. These are the things where people start to say, okay, this crocodile, this represents hip, it represents luxury, it represents sport. And it's through the influencers that you achieve that.